Okay, so uh, today we'll be discussing chapter 11. And uh, the title of this chapter is Transitivity, Structural Balance, and Hierarchy. So a lot of jargon. Hopefully that we can break it down as we go on with the discussion of this uh, chapter. So I think that the main objectives of this chapter, and I hope that I, we can highlight this for, uh, through our discussion, is understanding the micro foundations of networks. And by micro foundation is that uh, I think the author means is so far we have been uh, talking about networks as uh, nodes and edges, but now we are talking more about uh, motifs or structures and this can be represented as the the simplest way to talk about micro foundation is dyads and triads so we'll know more about what dyads and triads is, are and at the end we'll learn the basic of uh, basic functions from the package i graph for measuring uh, other features of a network like reciprocity transitivity and triad census so yeah so a lot of new things so it's an exciting chapter and we'll have uh, like a high level uh, discussion about the topics and trying to build some intuition. Okay, so uh, the, the first thing that I'm, I'm just following from it, this I, I copied all of this from the book, so I didn't change many of it uh, because I was focusing more of building some understanding of the topics. But the first thing, if you, if you are following from the book, is uh, the author guides you very clearly and with a lot of comment about how to load the data uh, from the GitHub repo and how to structure your network so that uh, you can investigate it and apply the, the code in the chapter. But if you are keen uh, on following the, this tutorial, I would ask you to maybe challenge yourself by instead of following this uh, approach for making the network uh, from iGraph is to use a tidy graph. So in the previous chapter, we have been, uh, we have always tried to show the, uh, exam, uh, the, the code in iGraph as it's shown by the author and then try to uh, cast it in this tidy approach by using tidy graph, which is more intuitive and more, uh, I think, yeah, it's it's more tidy. Uh, so today I didn't uh, provide the tidy version of this code, I hope, and I would push myself to do it before pushing the, the things, uh, the, the code to GitHub, but let's see how far I would go. So anyway, like it, it's very clear if you want to do it in an iGraph way, but it uh, be better to do it in a tidy graph. So this is the network. So here at the end, we end up with the network, an object called net59. And this network, it's a, as you can see here, if you call the, the object, it's a directed network. It has this number of uh, nodes and this number of objects. And you can see here, it's a directed network because it's a DN, directed network, but also you can see here the edges, like it's a, like the top, uh, 64, the top number of edges and which nodes are connected to each. Okay. So now we have a network and then we start to discuss the topics. So uh, the first thing we'll talk about is the, the dyad. So what is a dyad? So in a network, uh, so far we've been talking about edges, which is this link between nodes. And we've been talking about nodes, which is the, the agents or the entity the building block of, of this network. Uh, but um, it, it, when, when, when we talk about networks, we are all, always interested in relationships. And uh, the simplest relationship is a relationship that uh, requires at least two uh, entities, yeah, two agents. So you'll need two nodes and an edge to make uh, a relationship. So the simplest form of a relationship is a relationship that can be represented by two nodes and an edge. And basically this is what a dyad is, yeah? So a dyad is the most basic motif that consists only of two nodes and uh, there can be an edge or there can be uh, no edges. So if there is an edge and you are uh, studying an undirected graph, so there are two uh, configurations. So either these two nodes are connected and then you will have a connected uh, dyad and, or you have disconnected dyad. Or if you are uh, studying a directed gra graph, you maybe have three, uh, one of these three configurations. Either uh, the two nodes are connected to each other and they are, uh, uh, so both of them are, uh, so mutual means that I can send a message to this person, I'm related to this person. There is an arrow going from one node to the other and also the, the other 
node is sending a message or connected to the first. So it's basically like a double-headed arrow. So the no the edge here would be a double-headed arrow. Uh, unlike the asymmetric, where in the asymmetric, there will be maybe one of the nodes is sending, uh, one of the, of the nodes can also, can only direct the information or a message to the other node, but the other node cannot. So it's only a recipient and one is the receiver, yeah? But in the mutual, both of them can send and receive information. Or null, where there, there are no uh, connections between any of the nodes. So this is the diet, and this is the, the configuration that a diet can take based on the type of the network, whether it's undirected or directed. But uh, basically, it's uh, it's nothing but the nodes, two nodes, and an edge, or maybe no edges, yeah? Uh, but uh, the, the question is, like, why are we talking about diets now? Like, uh, why it's it's I think because this is what you what comes in mind when you're talking about network and you would when you would like to characterize a network uh, maybe you can have edges but maybe this edge uh, or you have uh, nodes but this would be wouldn't be enough so I think the simplest and the most basic way to start to calculate the relationships in the network and how they are propagated and how they are uh, distributed is by looking at uh, dyads or triads, which we'll be discussing. Uh, so another uh, term that is introduced in this chapter is transitivity. So the transitivity is related. Um, I can, it's, it's introduced here, but it's related to the triad, which we'll be talking about in the following uh, section. But basically, the, it's the number of existing triplets or the three nodes divided by all possible triplets. Or you can think about it as if you have a network and you can look at the network and see how many triangles you have. And then you can take these triangles and then you multiply the number of triangles by three because each triangle will consist of three nodes. And instead of counting each nodes one by one, you can look at the full triangles and then take the number of triangles and multiply it by three. This is you will take the, the number of triplets or the number of nodes that are part of the same triangle. I will show you a picture now, but it will be very clear. But basically it's a measure of tendency of the nodes to cluster together. And this, this is very related to the clustering coefficients. So if you would like to see uh, if you're, uh, if your network is segregated or it's clustered uh, compared to uh, uh, distribution of networks, you can look at the transitivity of this network. Yeah. Uh, so I, I have this uh, resource that I found that can make it clear. That, that yeah, here. Can you see the tab? Okay. So here, this is a, a very simple uh, network consists of five nodes. And these five nodes, here we have uh, four configurations of this network. Yeah? So in the first, uh, we have each node is connected to the other. So each node has only one, uh, uh, it's connected to only one other, but they're uh, this, instead of, so, sorry, let's start over. So we have five nodes and one, uh, only one node in the middle is connected to all the other uh, nodes and all the other nodes are connected only to the central one, yeah? So here, uh, what you can see that there are no triangles here, yeah? So this, what this means is that the transitivity here is zero because if you know that, uh, for example, if I know that this person is a friend of this person and this person is a friend of this person, uh, I can say that, oh, if this, those are friends and those are friends, maybe those are also friends, yeah? I can't make this inference, which would be a natural thing to assume if you are in a in a community, for example, yeah? That if I know a person and that person knows another person, it's very likely that I also know the other person. Uh, but here, this is, uh, this doesn't, uh, it doesn't exist here. And this is why if we look at A, you can see that the number of existing triplets is zero. So th a triplet would be like a, three connected to each other. And this is the number of possible triplets here is, uh, is four. And here, if you divide zero by four, it will be zero. Okay, so the transitivity of the first example here is zero. And uh, we can see that as we go from A to E, the transitivity grows by 
growing the by increasing the number of triplets. So in B, for example, we can see that now we have a triplet. That here we can see that okay, yeah. Um, each this node knows uh, is connected to this one, and if this node is connected to this one, so yeah, and also the others are connected to each other. Yeah. So here, everybody, uh, if you have a, a message or an information, a piece of information in this triplet, it can go from any one to the other. Uh, and yeah, so the the most the and E shows the highest transitivity because here everything is connected to everything, and here we have four triangles. I think yeah. So here we have one, two, three, and four. So this is the, the four triangles, and we can divide four by all the possible. We get one. So, yeah, yes, please. Um, so I know this is pretty much a toy example, but would you agree that the number of possible triplets in that particular example is actually eight, not four? Eight. Um, Mm -hmm. For How? instance, if you consider the connections from here to here and from here to here, and thus, and thus, then you have four other triangles to consider. Um, does that make mm -hmm. sense? I see your point. Yeah. One reason I'm thinking this was not considered here is because this is a geographical example. Um, mm -hmm. So space has some meaning, maybe. I don't know. I see. But how would, uh, if you could put the connection between this one and this one on a graph, right? Yeah. So I, this is I, this doesn't show it much because it's only two D, right? But if it's in three D space, then it would be more apparent. I get your point. I think I think you're right. I think that there are some. Yeah, maybe the number here is not so. Maybe the the number of possible triplets. This is why it's possible, but. Uh, or maybe the definition of triplets is not clear enough for me and it should be clear in the following section. But yeah, okay. so here, this could be connected to this one. And then we'll have another one. And then, yeah, I, I get your point. Good point, yeah. Thanks for pointing this out. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, so in, in, in general, I hope that now the, this concept of transitivity is clear that we are interested in knowing how the how connected the the network is by looking at uh, how many triangles or how many uh, triplets we have and how many connected triplets fully connected triplets in the network so let's go back here yeah. so yeah so transitivity is I mean, like you can think about it a friend of a friend is also a friend and it's very related to the clustering coefficient or the modularity. So if you have high uh, transitivity, this would mean that you have uh, high clustering. So because things are, uh, you have communities in the network. Uh, so, okay, so this is, yeah. So, and uh, the, the topic, to, back to the dyad. So where you have two nodes and they might be connected or not. So the, this is very uh, uh, related to the concept of graph density, which we have introduced previously. So the graph density is the number of uh, edges that exist in the network compared to the, the number of possible edges or the number of possible connections between all nodes. And uh, think there the, the dyads is very related to this concept. So you can think of the density of your network as the number of edges, or you can also think about it as the number of existing diets. So they, they both, both are the same, I think. The number of connected diets, sorry. So here uh, you can think of network density as a measure of proportion of present diet over the number of all possible diets. Uh, so there is uh, another concept here is called the reciprocity. 
So the reciprocity, reciprocity is something specific to directed graph because this would mean that there is a, a mutual relationship between uh, the nodes. So both nodes can act as a sender or a receiver. And uh, to measure this, uh, the reciprocity, so there is a function in, in iGraph that will take uh, a network as an input, and then we calculate this reciprocity. But, uh, but as I've said, like it only applies to a directed graph uh, where the, an, edge is, an edge is a reciprocal, like it's a mutual, when ego and an alter send each other ties, yeah? or both of them are a sender or a receiver. Uh, so, so, so far we had this, we generated this network and we could look at the, the graph density uh, to approximate the number of diet, the, the diets density in the network. And we could also look at the reciprocity, uh, but the numbers doesn't mean anything without context. So in order to make sense of this number, it's uh, necessary to compare it to a background. Yeah. So, and the background can be like a random graph in which you would compare your, your graph and then you can uh, make a statement about your graph compared to the random one, yeah? So in, in, in this chapter, you, you, the author introduces how to generate a random graph and, uh, and what is a random graph. So basically like a random graph is a, random, uh, is a graph where the connection between any two uh, nodes is uh, randomly distributed or the chance that any of any two nodes are connected is equal uh, over all the network, yeah? And we know that if you have a network, like a, a community, this is not true because uh, only uh, nodes that belong to one community will be, will be more likely to be connected to each other compared to other uh, members, members of other communities, yeah? But on a random graph, the likely that any uh, node connected to any other node is the same. It follows a uniform distribution. And this is why like uh, the random graph can act as a good null model to, uh, based on which you can compare the, the network of interest to. Yeah. And to generate a random network, there is a function in iGraph called Erdos, uh, Erdos Renier graph. And uh, sorry, tell you. Yeah, so where each edge has the same probability of being created. So this is another way of seeing that the distribution of the, the edges follow a uniform distribution. So here uh, we can take the, our network, we can look at the number of uh, vertices and save it to this object and look at calculate the density and then uh, take these values and generate based, based on these uh, values, we generate a random network, yeah? So this, a uh, piece of code will generate a random graph where the number of nodes equal the number of nodes in our network. And the uh, probability of drawing an edge follows the density on our network. And also because our network is directed, we also need it to be directed, yeah? And this is how it would look like. So it's a, a hairball where the, because it's, it's a random graph. And this is a, a network that we can look at and then try to calculate the same statistics for the, the reciprocity and look at how much, uh, how, how similar or different our network to this random graph, yeah? So now we can look, calculate the reciprocity of a random graph and we can see that the reciprocity is uh, very, very low compared to the, our uh, network, yeah? So our network here, like two, uh, like an order of magnitude, uh, two order of magnitudes less than our uh, network. And what does this mean is that uh, if we think about, as I said, reciprocity as the, so yeah, the reciprocity would be the ability or the, the chance or the probability that no, is it a probability? Is reciprocity a probability? I'm not sure. Okay, so is sorry, it is yes. it yeah? Is it bounded between one and zero? That would be my guess. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, uh, this this would mean that in this network uh, there is uh, members of this networks are more likely to send each other ties or 
they are more likely to act as a sender and receiver compared to this one where it's very hard that uh, like a message, for example, we can say that a message in this, passing a message in this network would be much easier compared to this one. Maybe this is one interpretation. Uh, yeah, what would be another interpretation? What do you think? If you would I'm like- I'm actually quite taken back by the very low probability or the very low reciprocity of a random graph. Um, I think if the probability for two nodes to connect to each other is 50%, then the probability for them to connect to each other twice would be. But again, this is probably also controlled by the density, right? Which is yeah. So here it's keeping it from connecting more. So here the the probability so the thing is in our network the probability of the probability of an edge between any two nodes uh, is not equal yeah uh, because uh, we think we assume that there are some maybe some communities or some structure in our network which is not uniform along the whole network but uh, what we did to generate this random network is that we said oh we will set the probability of uh, con uh, mutual connection between any two uh, nodes to a specific value. And we set this value based on the density. So this is why I think that, uh, so first of all, like this is only one network, yeah? And this is like a random, we just selected a network from, and so this network could have been uh, more dense or less. And this is why in the next section, we'll talk about how to generate a, a distribution of networks a distribution of random networks and instead of generating only one network so because to because this is how you would make a statistical test you will need a distribution to compare your network to but one random graph would should not is not enough uh, so yeah i think the take from this section is to have an idea about what dyad is uh, and the concept of transitivity and reciprocity I think there was also another, I had another resource here about reciprocity, transitivity, yeah. So this is a protein-protein interaction. So this is a tutorial from API. I think it was like a, a workshop or something about protein-protein network. And here they uh, give a, a more biologically based or biologically driven uh, definition of transitivity. So here they define transitivity as or clustering coefficient because this is an easier way to understand it and a more practical way. It gives you an idea how to use this. Why, why, do, why do we use this measure anyway? Of a network is a measure of the tendency of nodes to cluster together. And high transitivity means that the network contains community or groups of nodes that are densely connected internally. Yeah. So this would be a, a good example here. You can see that you have uh, a node hub here but then this node hub is shared between many communities, but you have, still have some separate communities, yeah? Uh, so I, I really like this definition and uh, maybe because of my background, but I, I like this one. And actually the, the, the definition that I have used here for transitivity, this is a friend of a friend, a friend of a friend is a friend. Uh, I, I took it from a resource from media. So the thing is when you're trying to, 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 to understand or study network analysis, you go around from one domain to a very different domain and you will notice how, how differently they define a, a concept here. Yeah? And sometimes it can be difficult to reconcile these definitions, to be honest. Uh, sometimes they look very, very different from one another. Uh, so we looked at this, this, and this, yeah. Anyway, I will keep all of these uh, resources uh, so you could go deep more into it on your own. So uh, after introducing the diet as the simplest uh, simplest motif in a network, and we'll now go uh, to a more complex motif, the 
triad, which in a, in a triad, as it imply, like you have three nodes. So it will consist of three nodes and it's more complex that, than a diet and have more uh, configuration or arrangements. So the, the, the fact that it's more complex, it means that it can encode uh, more complex relationships. Yeah. So uh, in, in the dyad, it was very flat. You have an, a receiver and a recipient, yeah? But here you can start to think about a more complex kind of relationships. If you have one, if you have three, you can think that maybe uh, one node maybe would be sending uh, the message to the other. So this may be a teacher and the students here, yeah? or maybe a protein, uh, like a transcription factors and, and two genes. Uh, so you can come up uh, with different scenarios or you can encode uh, more complex types of relationships with, uh, with triads compared to diets, yeah? And uh, in triads, uh, because they are more complex, they have more arrangements and this uh, leads to a concept called triad census. So a triad census is how many possible configuration do you have, okay? So similar to the diet where we had uh, less arrangements or configuration in the undirected compared to the directed. Here we can have, we have the same uh, situation where in an undirected graph, you can have eight possible triads, okay? And in uh, a directed graph, you have up to a six, 16 triads, okay? So how does this work? Uh, so here, this, uh, tri this is what a triad census looks like. So the simplest uh, form is, oh, Allah is joining, I think. Yeah, so, Ala? Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Sorry, sorry if you yeah. may. No, you're, you're not that late. Uh, thanks for joining anyway, and happy to have you back. So just, I, I will quickly wrap up what we have discussed so far, which is, is not a lot. So here we are in the second section of, of this chapter. So in the first section, I introduced the concept called dyad. And uh, I know you, the, you, if you remember what we discussed previously about networks, you have in the network, you have nodes and edges. And we used to talk about uh, nodes and edges separately, but now we are trying to put nodes and, so nodes and edges in the same object. And we call this, uh, motifs so you can have two two nodes and an uh, and an edge and this would be called the diet so this is here the definition is very basic you can have two nodes and a diet and we are to discussed uh, something called transitivity which is uh, very related to how connected or the clusterability of your network like uh, the or maybe the community if you're or the comp compositions of your network. If your network, everything is connected to everything and you don't have any communities, you will have low transitivity. But if you have an, a network where there is a, a structure, there is a hierarchy and there is some communities, you will have high transitivity. And here at the end, we talked about how to generate a random graph. So if you have a graph of interest and you're studying this graph and you would like to understand what the features of these graphs mean. So you take a measure of this graph, and then you would like to compare this graph to a random graph. And here, I, uh, the author introduced this function called iGraph for, from, a package called, uh, from a package called iGraph uh, on how to generate a random graph. Uh, but uh, yeah, and in the section that we have just started, we are talking about triads, which a more complex uh, motif of a network. So in dyad, we would only have two, two nodes, but in the triad, triads, we have three nodes. And these three nodes can be connected to each other in many different ways, yeah? And this is what we are going through now. So uh, as I've said, we with the triads, uh, you have the simplest form of arrangement or configuration is shown here on the top uh, left corner. And this is what called one, yeah? And I would like you to, Pay attention to this uh, numbers at the at the bottom. So this uh, this is uh, a code, and each uh, digit here represents a different thing. So I think uh, the first one this would mean that that everything is connected. Yeah. So this this would be the number of uh, 
the mutual edges. So for example, here we don't have any mutual edges. So a mutual edge would be an edge with a two headed uh, edge, yeah? So we can see this in uh, here, so da, 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 da. here, for example. So this is a, a mutual relationship, yeah? So here we have this node connected to this node and this node connected to this node, but they are every, every either of them can send the other a message and can act as a sender or receiver, yeah? And we have two of this relationship here. So this is why we have two here, yeah? So the first digit represents how many mutual edges you have in a network. And here, because we don't have any edges, we also don't have any mutual edges. So it's uh, zero, yeah? The, the second one represents the number of uh, directed edges. So this would mean an, an edge with one head. And here also, because we have no edges, it's set to zero. To zero. And the last digit represents the number of nodes. So this would be uh, the number of, of sep no, not the number of nodes, but the number of uh, unconnected nodes, yeah? Singletons. So I think the, the, the word for this would be a singleton. So a singleton would be uh, an uh, a node that is unconnected to anything else. And this is why the, you can code this uh, network as 003. As we grow this uh, network to be more and more complex with more relationship, we can see that the code uh, start to change. So here we have one edge. Uh, we can we'll set this to one, and we have uh, uh, two singletons. No, we have. Uh, so we have zero here because we don't have any mutual relationships. We have one because we have one edge, and we have two here because this and this. Yeah, I think the two here represents the fact that there are no connections at all in, in like two, uh, not vertices, but two sides of the triangle, right? Mm -hmm. So in number two and number three, uh, you can find that there are no connections uh, in these two sides of the triangle. Yeah. Therefore, the number is two. Yeah. Let me check maybe, has, maybe the author has made it clear. So here, to... okay, so yeah. Uh, the triad sends to calculate how many triads there are in each type, which as I mentioned in a directed network, mostly. so if we see a network with very few complete triads, it's 003, then we know something about the macro level. Mm. No. Okay, uh, yeah, here. So there's a receipt, for example, means you have zero mutual relationships, uh, zero asymmetric relations, and three null relations. Uh, yeah, so as, as Abdurrahman has said, it's more about, so, so it's more about the, the relationship. So here it's, it's not about the, the nodes, the singletons. So here, it will, this would, can be coded as one mutual, uh, zero asymmetric, and two missed or non-existing relationships. Yeah. Uh, here, this is here. We have two zero mutual, two asymmetric, and one that is missed. Yes, Ala. Um, what's the meaning of null relationship? So I think null that there are no relationships here. Null. Uh mean no relations so here uh, here the, so the word null is uh, is used in different contexts like null hypothesis or something but i think here it's a zero like or uh, there there are no connections so what's the difference between uh, mutual uh, relations and the null relation oh yeah so this is clear so uh, so there are okay let's talk about this so in an undirected graph uh, when uh, there is no direction to the to the connections to the edges, two nodes can be connected to each other in only one way. Yeah. So if I know that one node is connected to the other, or they can be not connected. 
this is an undirected graph. But in, in a directed graph, they can be uh, they can be not connected or they can be connected with uh, in an asymmetric way where one node is sending a message or receive uh, re uh, sending a, a message or an information to the other, or it can be mutual where one node can send a message and also it can receive a message from the other. So this is a mutual relationship. So I can I I I can send you a message and I also can receive a message from you. So it's it's a mutual relationship. So this is mutual, yeah. Because both of us can send each other message. It's not asymmetric. So this is an example of an asymmetric. This is a edge uh, or a relationship relation. And this is an example of a mutual relation. Uh, and this is a null relation where there are no connections between the nodes. Yeah, I get it. Uh, and uh, the, the directed edge uh, doesn't mean it's um, mutual relation. It, uh, it's called uh, directed uh, rela relation. So, uh, so for the mutual and uh, so these two examples, both of them are directed, but this one is asymmetric, which means that one of the nodes can uh, send a message and the other can receive the message, but not the other way around. So they are not uh, they are, they can't they, they have different roles in this uh, in this relationship, and it's they are not the same. But in a mutual uh, relation, both nodes can share information. They can send or receive. Uh, for example, in this in this network number seven, you have one uh, mutual relationship between these two nodes. Yeah. So this would mean that. This node can send an information to this one, and this node can send an information to this one. For for example, let's let's talk about let's let's put some flesh on this. Yeah. So if you have a, a biological network, yeah. So if you could think about this as a biological network, these two can be. If you could you could think of a, of a protein, and this protein is a complex protein complex, and these two there are connections between them, so they can bind to each other, and one can bind to the other, and one the other can bind to the protein. So this would be a mutual. Yeah. And then maybe uh, this is another protein that can it cannot bind to this one. So in order to make this protein complex, you, you need to wait first until these two are bound together. And then the chemical reaction will proceed by this one binding to this part of the protein, yeah? Uh, but this, this protein uh, and this one would not bind to each other. So, Number one he, he refers to um, uh, this relation and, mm -hmm. and zero refers to what? So here one refers to this asymmetric relation and zero because here the only relationship uh, we have is a mutual relationship. Yeah, so, so in general refers to uh, symmetrical or not? Uh, Exactly. So the second digit says how many uh, how many asymmetric uh, relationships you have, and here because we have no asymmetric relationship, it's zero. And uh, in two, uh, you can see that it's one because we have one uh, asymmetric relationship. Yeah, I get it. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I am I'm very talented in sometimes making a. Things sounds more complex than they are, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> it, it takes me more time to clarify a concept. So, but anyway, it's okay. It's okay. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I appreciate these questions, and I think that because it gives you an uh, yeah. Well, sometimes you are wrong, like uh, as Abdur Abdurrahman, like uh, there is a mistake in my understanding here. But also, you can try to uh, think of an example or or or. Uh, a more realistic scenario. So yeah, so we have talked about this uh, triad. What, what what is a triad and what is a triad census? But how can you calculate this for a network? Yeah. So there is a function in the iGraph package called triad census, and when you pass a network to this function, it will return as expected uh, sixteen values. Yeah. So these sixteen values represent this uh, the code here. So how many configurations are uh, present in the network. And here we have in the triads, we have 16 configurations. So 
this one will give you how many uh, of each of those configurations are present in the network. So here we can see that the largest number is uh, the first configuration. And these are the no relationships. And the last one is the fully connected uh, mutual triads. And when you compare the values here based on a, a network that uh, like a, a real network and a natural network to a random graph, you can see that here the, the triad that represents the configuration with the more complex relationships and more connectedness are missing here. Yeah. So here, for example, we have no triad with mutual connections, uh, no triads with, uh, no, uh, so, yeah, sorry, yeah. So this is the one where everything is mutual. Here is everything is, uh, two are mutual, one is asymmetric. But anyway, like no triangles, because I think the, the last five are triangles. So we have here zero, 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 one, zero. So yeah. And the only uh, relationships we have are, so it's eight, nine, 10. So this would be 10 here. So yeah, there is a, there is triangles, but it's asymmetric triangles. So this is the, the most complex relationship that exists in the random uh, network, but it's also very low. So yeah, th this gives you an idea. And I think that this is the, the first application of uh, or how to build an intuition on a network and how uh, a real network differs from uh, a random network. So they can have the same density, they can have the same number of nodes and the same number of edges, but the only, the only way that to differ between a real network and a, a random network is to start to look at a higher level uh, connections and higher uh, and more structure in the network. Uh, but here, uh, what uh, in this section, what the author is trying to say is that comparing your network to uh, one random network is not enough. Yeah, so you need to have uh, a distribution or a background of many many networks that you can have, uh, and then you can compare to your network to this uh, sample of random networks. So this set of code is nothing but here. This is the function that we have seen in the previous sections that is used to generate the random graph. And here we are building a list of a hundred random. Yeah, we are uh, taking a hundred random graphs and we are building a distribution of random graphs. And then basically we are calculating the census, triad census for all of these uh, random graphs and then giving them names so that it's easy to interpret. So this is nothing but the, the codes for the triads. We are naming the columns. So at the end, we have here, this is a matrix and this matrix have uh, columns. They have 16 columns and each column represents the, yeah, the number of uh, triad configurations that came out from this population of, uh, not population, this sample of random networks. Uh, yeah, so, this is the object that we have right now. And now we're trying to uh, investigate this, uh, this sample and we're comparing uh, the real network to this uh, sample of random networks. So in this part, what the, the author is trying to do is to take this object, this matrix, and then calculate for it some statistics. So you're trying to calculate the mean triads and the lower confidence interval, the upper confidence interval, and the observed, which, and observed is the, this is the real network. So here, the observed is nothing but, da, 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 da. yeah, so here the observed is, I'm just trying to walk you through the code because I'm not sure if you, how much you're familiar with R, but sometimes it can take you more time. So here trial, uh, this is the data frame. And then the, we added to this data frame, the observed, and this is nothing but applying triad census to the real network. And we use our bind because to bind the rows so that you add one more row to your network. So this, this data frame would be 101 rows, 100 random networks, and one row is the real network. So anyway, uh, here after applying the statistics, 
uh, this is how it looks like. So this is not the rows of, of the of the of the simulation, but this is the rows of the represented triads. So here we can see that, for example, this uh, the first uh, configuration, the most simple configuration where you have no connect uh, the null relationships. You could look at the mean of this connection, uh, the lower confidence interval, the upper, and the observed. Yeah, but it's it's difficult to look at all of this number and make sense out of it. So we make a plot. So here the, the author used ggplot. And this is the figure that comes out that represents the distribution of the configurations in the simulation of 100 random networks compared to the observed or the real network. Yeah. So let's walk through this together. So here uh, the rows represents a different configuration of the triads. Yeah. So on the top, pro, uh, top, um, row, let's say top uh, row, we have the 300 uh, or 300. So this would be like the complete connected mutual graph. Okay. And at the bottom here, we have the 003 and this would be the separate triad. So here we have the null relationships. Yeah. And so this is the opposite way. The, the, on the top, you have the more connected and the more complex relationships. And at the bottom, it's the more simple and uh, no connections. And on the left, you can see here that, uh, on, yeah, and on the x-axis, you have the, the values. So here we are looking at the means. So and the, the, mean, uh, the, the, mean, the mean census, I think. And here we are. I think, so let's do something here. Uh, I think there were some scaling here. So to, to, trial DF, trial, trial DF. Okay, but uh, yeah, so I think there were some scaling here to set the, the values between zero and one because here you could see that the output of triad census is absolute numbers. They are not uh, uh, proportions, but here there is a step where things are scaled and I'm trying to look for it. Oh yeah, so it's, it's, it's the mean, yeah. So it's, it's just the mean. So the mean would end up being like this, maybe. Anyway, so here you could see that for the more complex uh, configuration of the triads, the random simulation uh, are zero for this. So here you could see that uh, the colors here is the is very is redundant actually. So here the colors are redundant, and the only color that you need to focus on is the color of the last bit here. So this is the very 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 pinky color, and this color represents the real network. So for example, at the top row, you have all the simulations are zero. So not the, all the simulations. So this is the, the mean across the 100 uh, random network, OK? So the mean would be zero. But for the real network, it's one, OK? Yeah. And here you can also see for the more complex, we have higher values for the observed compare or the real network compared to the simulated networks. Uh, and also for the for the simulated networks, they can see that they have more uh, yeah, they have higher values for the less connected or the less complex relationships. So this is the the code that represents the triad that are, for example, this one, it has asymmetric relationships. Uh, or uh, maybe this one, you can see here that this one will have one asymmetric relationship and uh, two missing relations. Uh, but here you can see that the, the real network would have less value of this. So this would mean that we have basically more connections or more complex uh, interactions or configurations of the, of the triads in the real network compared to the, uh, yeah, in the simulated random graphs. So. Yeah, I, I would like to stop here for a bit and hear from you. Like, is, is there something that not clear for you or? Yes, please, Ella, go on. Uh, can you please scroll to uh, the graph? Yes, sure. 
And by the way, you don't need to, to raise you. your hand, actually. Just stop me and talk, talk directly, yeah? Thank you. So uh, first question, um, this point represents that uh, the real um, or the observed uh, network, it means less connected here than others? So uh, what you are pointing at is the legend, yeah? So basically what you are pointing at is the color of the observed, okay? Mm. So here, this, this, what you are pointing at, uh, what, you're point, what you are pointing at means that the observed is colored pink, yeah? Mm. So maybe you are thinking about the, the main figure, uh, the main plot, so you could point at, maybe you are meaning the, the last row, right? No, I mean um, uh, this uh, points uh, uh, the the pink point here refers to the that this um, the first one here is less connected than others, or refers to what? Okay, so this point here uh, represents the real network. Okay, and to see how this was calculated, let's go back to the beginning. So at the beginning, we created a, a list. So here the author created a list and this list is empty. Yeah? So I created a list of length 100 and then he populated this list with the output of this simulation. So he ran the simulation 100 times and he generated a 100 a random graph. And now this, we have a list here of, uh, of the result of the triad census of 100 random graph. But list, uh, list is not uh, analysis friendly and you would like to have things in a matrix or a table. So he used uh, rbind so that he put everything together and he named everything, uh, all the columns based on the, the code of this triad configuration, okay? And to this uh, matrix, he added uh, an, extra an extra row and this row had the triad census of the real network, okay? So now we have a matrix and in this matrix, we have the 100 rows represent uh, simulations of random graph. And the last row represents the, the output of the real network, okay? And at the end here, what he did is he calculated the statistics for the random graphs. And then he calculated also the observed. So here the observed is yeah, he, here, this is the matrix to a data frame. And then, ah, so this is the scaling step, okay? So, so here, what is happening here is that he took this, uh, the, the table here, and because this table had one, uh, 101 row, he only subsetted the first 100 rows. So here, it's, uh, he's selecting the rows from one, to the number of observed, uh, the number of the, no. Yes, so I think this is only selecting the, the first set. Maybe I can run this code, but it wouldn't be worth it here. So here, so we have from the first, we have select, no, the, here the, the columns are selecting the columns and for each column, we are, sorry. Here, we are dividing the, the value, each value in this column by the maximum value. So this is just uh, scaling, yeah? And here, what is happening is that we're taking this data frame and then we are selecting the first 100 row so this only selecting the simulated data and putting it into this trial this this object and then selecting the the last row which represent the real network and putting it here okay and finally he calculates some statistics based only on the trial df which is the object with the simulated random networks and he adds yet another uh, uh, column which contains the the scaled values of the observed or the real network. Okay, so now it's more clear to me why things were bounded between zero and one. Uh, and here, this the the first the first four columns, uh, no, the first the second, third, and fourth column 
represent the statistics for the simulated because of course you can calculate means or or a mean or a, a, a lower confidence interval if you have only one value from your network yeah it doesn't make sense i was just dumb sorry so let's go back to the plot so and to your question i'm sorry uh, so yeah exactly so in in this legend uh, all the all the all the values here until the one below before the last represents the results from the simulated networks okay so each point here represents a, a statistic from this network and here the statistic that we are looking at is the means yeah uh, so why we calculated the lower and the lower com uh, confidence interval and the upper because we wanted to add this a band yeah because this uh, the value here is a random variable and we wanted to see how confident we are in this uh, value so here I mean, the, so yeah go sorry. on sorry i mean we compare uh, the result of simulations uh, into the real network right exactly yeah so my question here uh, this uh, pink point uh, refers to that this real network uh, is less connected than other between the observed uh, real network. So this this would mean that the real network is more connected. Yes, but why we just compare to to this uh, model uh, or or this network only one? Oh, because uh, so this is the the main. I think this is the situation that you'll be dealing with. You will have one network that you are studying. Maybe you have been working on collecting some data, or you have a, a network of interest that you have been uh, studying, and you are maybe doing some experiments and you are trying to test some hypothesis. So usually you will have one network of interest, yeah. But what mm -hmm. you would like to do is to understand this network, and to understand this network you will have to compare it to a reference or a distribution of other networks. And you can't make a hundred experiment. And by experiment, I mean like going to the lab and, or maybe collecting some data or making a questionnaire or asking people, yeah? So what you would do is you would collect, you would uh, use statistics and make simulations that represents a, a background or represents a, a reference to your network. So for example, here in this uh, random graphs, we said that we need this random graphs to be the same size of our graph, yeah? And we said that we also need that uh, the likelihood of uh, an edge in this graph to be controlled by the density in our graph, mm -hmm. okay? So this would mean that if you think that you have a random graph, uh, sorry, if you have a distribution of networks, how similar uh, your network to the this distribution? Because if it is similar to the average random network, this would mean that you don't have any information in, the, in your network. There are no structure and it's uh, you don't have communities and maybe there is something wrong with it. But what you would expect is that it will deviate uh, very much from the structure of the networks that are drawn from a random distribution because your network is not random it's controlled by some complex uh, interactions uh, and this is why you can see here that things here especially for the higher order let's let's call them higher order interactions or the more complex interactions they are all lacking in the random uh, uh, in the random networks but in the real network they are already there. They are, they are all. It's not one. Like it, here, it's one because it divides whatever value by itself. So it's it's one here. Uh, oh, sorry. Because here everything is zero. So here it's one. So this is the, the highest value. But yeah, here there is also a problem with the scaling here. I don't think that this is the best way to do scaling. But anyway, uh, I think you were right that the observer is more connected. And why it's one network? Because this is the realistic situation. If you are th thinking about research, yeah, I'm. I'm thinking about these uh, points. Why it should refer to 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 render a result of simulation or of the real one? It means observe it. 
Yeah. Uh, Abd Rahman, what do you think about this uh, observation? Yeah, I, I was about to agree with you on what you just said. And uh, we can see from this graph that the observed natural, you'd say network, is, is much more different. Uh, but something that also caught my attention, and I'd like to you know, entertain that idea with you guys, uh, is the fact that um, so you have these three um, configurations that are the same, right? So they are accompanied with these symbols uh, or letters U, D, and C. And, and since they are the same, they have similar distributions, right? But then you come to this one and this one, and, and they have wildly different distributions all while uh, or when the you know the the kinds of links or the kinds of connections between them are actually the same so this is kind of uh, something that's interesting for me um i'm guessing that um this is some sort of transition point uh, that is related to density or perhaps if we increase the number of random networks that we simulated uh, we would find uh, more similarity between these two as well uh, but yeah i'm just entertaining some uh random thoughts yeah uh, but, but for the graph itself i actually quite understand it is it's quite cool i i don't know what you meant about the scaling issue so what do you find faulty with the scaling that you know it's, you'd want to approve yeah it's it's a uh, it's just the the interpretation like i mean like here one would what would one mean because you scale things by the by divided the, dividing it by the maximum value and here mm -hmm. here for the random simulation it was all zero yeah so you were dividing the value from the observed by itself so you will get one yeah mm -hmm. and also for the last row here here the the absolute numbers are in the order of uh, millions or something yeah so the if you could go back here uh, sorry so here you could see that it's very large numbers, yeah? So you, you can't uh, differentiate between them. And this is why everything is very concentrated at the bottom. But yeah, would, maybe it could uh, have helped uh, to have a log scale mm -hmm. or something in order to differentiate uh, the amount of connections or different connections, but yeah. at the same time be able to fit them into a single graph. Yeah, but also I think it's a, it's a bit, uh, it, I don't like to scale things between Maybe like uh, what I would have done is that like a z-score, yeah, like divide things by use, using z-score, yeah, divide by the uh, subtract the mean and then divide by standard deviation. That would be a good thing, uh, but this would give an yeah an indicate maybe like it gives a feeling that it's a probability, but it's not probability, yeah. And when you are trying to communicate it, like what I'm doing now, it's I'm just getting confused. But back to Alaa questions, when she was talking about like this set of uh, of uh, values from the observed, I think that if we connected the nodes here to be like this, yeah. And I don't know if I could rotate, but I can bend my head here. So <laughs> you, you could see that, uh, they have like this bump of values that uh, you have, it, yeah, it decreases here. Like they have less uh, values here compared to the random, uh, random simulation. So remember that the values that you see here is they are compared to each other. And because the random simulation, they had more values. So they were the maximum number uh, for this configuration. You were dividing the value in the observed to the by the, the simulated uh, networks, okay? So it was just less than, this would mean that you have less configurations of this type. And this uh, this type of configuration is, yeah, it, it might be something that's specific to, to the network, but I'm really not sure about this. But uh, I will maybe, say final thing about uh, what Abdurrahman said, you could see that for the random uh, simulation, you have this uh, uh, pattern, yeah? So 
I also don't like the way that it was represented. So it's not only the scaling, but the, the choice of representing things as separate nodes. I don't think maybe there were a better way, but here you could see that uh, first of all, uh, the values are the same here. So it's uh, here at this point. So there is this critical point, there is a shifting between where things goes from zero to, uh, and it's a very sharp break here. Yeah? So it goes from things are zero, and then you have these three values that represent the first time in the network that this, uh, the appearance of the asymmetric, no, it was there, so sorry. So here it's a, this is the asymmetric edge. So here everything is asymmetric. So yeah, this is the triangles. So if you have three, so here the, the triangle, we, this is the triangle, this is a triangle, this, this is not. So, but yeah, so here for the triangle, start to go from zero to higher. Yeah, so this would mean that the simulated and the real one are getting more similar at this configuration, yeah? So, how would you use how would you use this in a realistic scenario? Maybe you would think that uh, you would like to look for features that differentiate your network from random networks, and this would be a very uh, like an um, a configuration that you would like to neglect, or you wouldn't look at this as a discriminating feature between a real network and a random network. So th this is how I would uh, think about it. Yeah, so yeah, I think this was more enough for this part. Uh, let's move on quickly. How to remove the annotations? <laughs> uh, clear, clear all drawings. Okay, now we're back to normal. Uh, so yeah, the, the final uh, part that uh, of this section uh, that I will discuss because there is uh, yet one more section that's called panning triads. And it's a, to be honest, it's a, more about the code and making a, a function. So I don't think that we'd benefit a lot from, from discussing this one. So I will end at this part of the section. And here, what the, the author is, is talking about is if you have these values for your network and this uh, here, you have your network, you calculated the triad census and you have the number of each configuration of the triads of your network. And you would like to compare your network to a family of networks that have certain characteristics based on their triad census. So for example, let's say that there is a family of network that have these characteristics, uh, char characteristics where they have very low number or zero in the, this would be the, yeah, unconnected or the, if, if you remember the triads here, yeah, so the first are the less connected. So there's maybe a family of networks that are less connected here for this value of configurations, but then you it's one here. By one, it's not like absolute one, but these are weights, yeah? And maybe you would like to decrease this and you have this configuration set to zero, yeah? And you would like to see uh, comparing your network to this family of networks, uh, How what is the score of your network, yeah? So what you would do is that you will take the triad census and you would uh, multiply it by these weights and then you would sum the number. So what, what this is uh, doing is you would set the, the values or the, the number of configurations that are undesirable by this class of networks to zero. And you would only uh, count the configuration that are here set to one and you will subtract from it the configuration that are here uh, and, uh, said to be minus one. So this is just like giving weights to this uh, census and then calculate the number of configuration. So basically you could go back here and say, I don't want to count this. I don't want to count this. I don't want to count this, but add this, this, and this, subtract this and add some of this, yeah? So I have to say that I didn't know what a tau statistic. So this is called tau statistics. And when I Googled it, I thought it was uh, the only uh, results that I got was from uh, correlation, like tau statistics from Kindle uh, correlation. 
but I was convinced that this has nothing to do with correlation. And then I checked the citation in the, in the, in the book, and actually it was pointing to this paper. So in this paper here, you have, when I just look at tau, yeah, here. So quickly, they are talking about this, uh, di this distribution with the tau statistic, okay? And the tau statistics weights the triads type and counts their occurrence compared to a specified random network, okay? And here they are, uh, they are interested in a certain hierarchy, okay? And they are considering uh, some configuration that they are interested in and others that they are not interested in, yeah? So uh, maybe you could, you, you might be interested in going through this paper, maybe only this section to have an idea about the tau score, uh, but it has nothing to do with the, with correlation or Kindle correlation or so non like a, sorry. Yes, go on. Uh, so it's like comparison between the weighting and, um, and the real network or random network. It's, it's a, it's, uh, comparing your network to, so th this this actually goes back to your question, the previous question, you why you are comparing one network, yeah? So in case you have many networks and maybe you are collaborating or you, you found maybe uh, some published work, they work on a similar network and they came up with a structure and this network has a structure that is similar to a family of networks. So you would like to see how does your network compare to the other network, yeah? So what you would do is you would take the configurations of interest and then uh, calculate how many of those configuration exist in your network. And this is how you would do it, yeah? You would uh, set all the undesired configuration to zero and you will set the desired configurations or the configurations of interest to you to one and look at how many of them you have in the in your network. So yeah. this is how, how I understood it. Can I ask you please what's the meaning of waiting here? It means, yeah. uh, I mean like uh, based on what uh, we call the desired or not. Okay, so uh, this is based on your question. So here, uh, the if you went back to the book, so da, da, da. yeah, so here they were just like picked it as an example. So there is a weighting scheme and they would like to look at something called ranked clustering. So ranked clustering is like if you have a hierarchy, okay? And those, uh, the, the, the authors of this paper said that uh, to quantify a certain hierarchy, a certain structure in a network, you need to look at some configurations and to ignore other configurations, yeah? And they said that uh, this for uh, this uh, set of weights would do the the magic, yeah. So you don't need to look at those configurations. You don't need to look at those configurations, but the configurations of interest that would reflect the structure or the hierarchy that you are, would like to study are here set to one, okay? And uh, the structures or uh, sorry, the configurations that actually you would like to minimize or subtract here are set to negative one. And when you multiply this by your triad census and then sum, the, the final number would be the number of configurations that follow this weight and uh, reflects the structure or the hierarchy that you are trying to study. Like it wouldn't, I, I'm not sure that uh, for, for me, the first time did it make sense? The second time it didn't. And it only made sense for me like 15 minutes before our meeting by going quickly through the paper. So yeah, just try to go through the paper very quickly. Only the section that talks about the Tau statistics and feel free to message me if you would like to uh, have more, uh, more help about uh, understanding it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, and for this, I've, I see that we have gone like, oh, it's almost an hour and a half. Uh, so yeah, this is all I wanted to discuss with you today with this chapter. And uh, I think it, it's it's getting more interesting in the book. So now you could start to see how would this apply to your uh, work or network of interest. 
and how to make an in, build an intuition about networks more than just applying code and looking at the output. And yeah, if, if there are no more questions or comments, I, I would say bye and see you next week. All right, see you next week. See you, thanks for seeing you. Thanks for showing up. Thank you, bye. Bye.